Not a bad joint, eh, Verna? You have to whistle that song. I'm sorry, honey. Guess I forgot you're not as happy about this trip as I am. It's your idea. Ah, oh, look, darling, snap out of it, will you? Look, let's see if we can't make this thing work. Let's try it again, just a little bit harder. Maybe we can find some of those things we lost. That sounds like the dick I used to know. Way, way back. Yeah. Shoot the brakes by anything you want. The old idea again. Money buys everything. No, honey, I didn't mean it that way. I just wanted to be generous, that's all. Generous in every way. You see, I... I don't intend to lose you. Not ever again. Thank you, darling. Huh? Do you know who that is? No, should I? You certainly should. That's Charlie Chan, the famous detective. <laughs> like to meet him? Yeah, sure would. Hello, Mr. Chan. Remember me? Verna Martin. Well, it was Verna Thompson when we met in Honolulu. Ah, yes, with your honorable father. Most happy to meet again. Also, a recollection of first meeting, most pleasurable. This is my husband, Dick Martin. Happy to meet you, Mr. Chan. Also, very happy. But what are you doing in a place like this? Primary purpose is to secure a suitable gift for daughter. Perhaps she'd like something like this, designed by Dirk himself. So, who is Dirk? Only one of the top designers in Europe. He's Van Dorn's right-hand man. What do you think of it? Beautiful. I agree with Mr. Martin. How about coming over to the hotel and having a drink with us? Deeply regret I must decline most gracious offer. I have previous engagement with Van der Royden, Amsterdam Police. Oh, well, I'll call you tomorrow and meet then, huh? Most grateful. Shall look forward to your call. And now you must excuse me. We might as well go, too. I've got what I want. All right, listen. Duck? Duck? Duck, I want you. Ah, Contessa, you will be delighted with my latest creation for you. All right, save the build-up. Let's see it. It's here. Well, where is it? It's gone. Gone? What are you talking about? I put it here myself not 20 minutes ago. I can't have walked away. Idiot, don't stand there staring. I'm sailing on Friday and I want that sweater. Dirk, one of our most successful shows. Contessa, how delightful to see you. Van Dorn, have you seen a sweater I just put here? One I made to order for the Contessa. What is it like? Powder blue, Monte Carlo neck, with a pattern in rhinestones. Merciful heaven. Well, what is it? Contessa, how can I possibly tell you? A most dreadful mistake. I... I sold it. My sweater? You sold it? Who to? I'm desolated. How can I ever forgive myself? Who to? A charming American lady. She was looking for something very special. I don't care how charming she is. You get that sweater back, you hear? I'll phone Mrs. Martin at once and ask her to exchange it. Then I'll send a girl around for it and you shall have your sweater in no time. <laughs> Oh, is that you, Mrs. Martin? Oh, I'm so glad to find you in. I've been trying to reach you for some time. Oh, we just got in. What is it? Yes. I can't do that. I like it. Besides, it was a gift for my husband. Oh, but Mrs. Martin, I'll have another one designed for you better. More exclusive. I'm very sorry, Mr. Van Dorn. But I'm not parting with it. And what was that all about? Seems the old guy's goofed. 
That sweater belongs to some Contessa. Verna, honey. Mm. Does it really make a difference because I gave it to you? Believe it or not, it does. Okay, I'll hop in the shower and tonight, tonight we're gonna tear up the town. I wish you hadn't called. No, no, he's in the shower, but... Bob, I've got to be honest with you. I'm going to have another try at my marriage. Yes, I've made up my mind. No, I'm sorry, Bob. I feel bad about it, too. I am very sorry. Goodbye. Who was that? Who was it? It was just Van Dorn again. There was a call here just now. Can you get the party back? I see. Long distance from London. Now, never mind it. Same thing all over again. Lies. Deceit. You little double-crosser. All right, you said enough. I tried. Believe me, I tried, and I meant to go on trying. I'm through. From now on, if you want to talk to me, you can do it through my lawyers. I told you I'd never let you go. Mrs. Martin? Yes? May I come in? I'm the Contessa Fasano. I know what you've come about. I'm afraid you've come at a rather bad time. We're just getting ready to go out. Oh, don't bother to explain. I've had four husbands. Now, I don't believe in double talk, so I'll be blunt. How much profit will you take on the deal? I'm not interested in profit. I bought it. It's mine. Now, you're not going to be sentimental about it now, are you, dear? Frankly, no. I happen to like the design, that's all. Well, why not let the Contessa have it? You can always get another. And I was so looking forward to wearing it in America. So am I. In Reno. There's my move. Queen. Oh, my dear old friend Van der Royden, your mind seems to have taken flight like butterflies in the sunshine. Checkmate. Again? What is the matter with me tonight? Well, explain. Your humble opponent being on vacation has relaxed, contented mind, while you have half brain on duty. <laughs> Inspector Van der Hoyden. Yes, he's here. It's for you, Mr. Martin. Oh, thank you. Yes? What? Oh, I am exceedingly sorry. I shall do everything in my power. We'll be there immediately. Regret I cannot give you revenge. More serious matter than chess has arisen. What is that? Young friend just returned to hotel room and found wife murdered. He is being held on suspicion by your police. Let us go. Loss of a loved one is difficult even for strongest shoulders. I, I can't cope with a thing like this. Coming back, finding it that way. And now all this. That guy thinks I killed her. You will have every chance to prove you did not, Mr. Martin. Now you admit you had a quarrel with your wife. Yes, we quarreled. Why don't you arrest me? I'm afraid I shall have to, Mr. Martin, on suspicion of murder. Go ahead. <laughs> I just won't be dead as though without it. Your story is that you left the Contessa alone with your wife and went for a walk along the canal. When you got back, you found your wife dead, correct? Yes. Death was instantaneous, due to a blow on the head from a blunt weapon, such as this. But why should anybody use a loaded gun as a blackjack? To avoid the noise of a shot. Now let us note an unusual fact. This gun of yours has been wiped clean. There are no fingerprints on it. Mr. Martin, would it not be more natural to find your fingerprints on your own gun? Humble apologies, Mr. Van der Ryden. But would it not also be natural for anyone else using gun to wipe off fingerprints? 
True, but Mr. Martin also had a motive, jealousy. The phone call to London, his effort to trace the call, the quarrel. Also the fact that nothing is missing. Slight correction, please. I have searched and found one thing is missing. What is that? Sweater that Carlos Forzano was so anxious to get back. As I was saying, Mr. Chan, what could one possibly say about a sweater by Dirk? It was superb, exquisite, no doubt. Uh, but tell me, would uh, this particular sweater be more exquisite than any other sweater designed by Dirk? All his sweaters are superb and exquisite. Of course. Women would kill each other for a sweater by Dirk, Mr. Chan. Do not doubt it. Then it is your opinion that Mrs. Martin was killed for the sweater? That is my opinion. I know it. I haven't dealt with women for 30 years without learning their weaknesses and their ruthlessness. I am so grateful for the superior knowledge you have just given me in feminine psychology. And now, could you perhaps tell me where the Contessa lives? But of course, a 28 Bronkhorststrasse. Do not, I beg of you, tell her that I told you. Oh, have no fear. She's a dangerous woman. I put nothing beyond her. So it would please you to have so good a customer arrested for murder? No, no, I didn't say that. Merely that she's capable of murder, as who is not? Yes, as who is not. And now, if you don't mind, I should like to meet your designer, Dirk. This way, Mr. Chair. Ah, Dirk, uh, this is Mr. Chan. He'd like a word with you. Can't you see I'm busy? I will not be disturbed when I work later. A thousand pardons I would never think of intruding, because genius cannot be interrupted by a mundane affair. Ah, you understand. I shall listen to you. Oh, thank you. Very, very excellent. So realistic. Just a rhinestone, Mr. Chen. I presume this sweater is for someone important. All my sweaters are for someone important. This one is for the Contessa Filzano. Second sweater for same lady. First was sold to the wrong party. Ah, yes. Mrs. Martin now no longer with us. Also, first sweater no longer with us. Interesting question. Where would first sweater be now? Have you any theories on that subject, Mr. Chen? Perhaps. But walk and air sometimes helps clear mind. Particularly if walk is in right direction. Charlie Chan. Yes, come in. You have been expecting me? Expecting you? Oh, I know, but I know who you are, Mr. Chan. Oh, won't you sit down? Thank you. You'll have to excuse me, but I must get on with my packing. Oh, Admiral Van Trump, I believe. Quite right. How clever of you. I always admire strong men who know what they want. And also get what they want? Of course. Now, you're going to ask me some questions about that terrible affair at the Martins Hotel. Such a tragedy. She was so young and so pretty. And stubborn. Stubborn? I had thought you found her most stubborn regarding little matter of sweater, made for you but bought by her. Of course, I could be wrong. I haven't said you are. Oh, excellent stick. Good for walking. Also useful as weapon. Oh, yes. It could be quite lethal. If one was in a lethal mood. Please forgive. I forgot to take pill. Could I have a glass of water, please? Of course. Oh, may I? Excellent antidote for Dutch food, however, not nearly so tasteful. Now tell me, do you go to America often? About three times a year. I have three American ex-husbands who must be reminded of their alimony. And you wish to wear a beautiful sweater on the way? I love beautiful things. Do you hold that against me? Oh, no. Things of beauty, lovely ladies included, are joy forever. But you must have been most sad when recently deceased lovely lady refused to part with specially designed garment. 
Who said she refused to part with it? Contessa, you are full of surprises. You too. In fact, I thought you knew she'd parted with it. Me? Well, weren't you looking for the sweater just now when I went to get you water? Humble apologies. Mouse now caught in trap. I was looking but did not find. Only because you didn't look far enough. It is beautiful, isn't it? Most beautiful. Would it be tactless for me to request exactly how you came by same, Contessa? Mrs. Martin gave it to me, on the condition that I had an identical one made for her, which I did. But did you not find it strange she changed mind about giving up article? <laughs> you may know a lot about crime, Mr. Chan, but perhaps you don't know much about women. There was only one thing that would make her give this up. Ah, yes, I think I understand. Desire to hurt one who gave it to her. Most interesting. Very grateful for unsolicited help. Goodbye, Contessa. Goodbye, Mr. Chan. Charlie, so somebody tried to kill you after you had visited the Contessa. But what does it prove? To slow oriental mind, such as personal persons consider me dangerous to criminal plan. But what plan? We have Mrs. Martin's murderer, the husband. Perhaps yes, perhaps no. If you ask me, Charlie, you are allowing friendship for Martin to cloud your reason. Reason clouded, but not by friendship. Small article is obstacle to solution. What's that? Lady sweater. I do not see how the sweater enters into it now. One question, please. In communications with the United States, has there been evidence of diamond smuggling recently? As a matter of fact, yes. Wait. Here we are, on the Diamond Merchants Association of America. They say that cut diamonds are being smuggled into the States in increasing quantities. But what have diamonds to do with Dick Martin and his wife? Permit me to clarify confusion. What would be more simple than a respectable noted dressmaker and social celebrity Contessa going into business together? What business? Diamond smuggling. Say real diamonds were sewn on Van Dorn's sweater together with rhinestones. Contessa takes sweater through customs as own personal apparel. Result? Much illicit profit. But no profit, no diamonds, if Mrs. Martin was allowed to keep sweater. Could be, I suppose. Thus, motive for Mrs. Martin's murder also attempt on my life this afternoon. Now, very apparent. And that heavy cane the Contessa uses. That could have been the weapon. Except... Except what? If Andorne was smuggling diamonds, he would not be so foolish as to sell the wrong sweater to Mrs. Martin. Quite correct. I admit error in logic. Obviously, we must suspect the designer, Dirk. No harm in asking him a few questions. Sergeant Bucker, pick up Dirk, Van Dorn's designer. Meanwhile, Mr. Chan and I will visit the Contessa. If deductions are correct, have feeling we will find both pigeons in the same nest. Remember, Contessa leaves tomorrow. You're probably right, Charlie. All right, Becker, forget it. One moment. Must not overlook possible means of escape. I tell you he suspects. My precautions are necessary, besides. You see? The service entrance. Go quickly. Yes? Forgive my troubling you, Contessa. I would like a world with you. About that murder again, haven't you bothered me enough already? I'm... I'm busy. I'm sorry, but it is necessary. I've told you and that Chinese gentleman all I know. I'm sailing tomorrow and I've got a million things to do. I must ask you to permit a search of your baggage, Contessa. I have a warrant. Search my baggage? Are you mad? I'll not... Now what? I'll never get my packing done. This is disgraceful. Dirk! This officious man stopped me leaving. 
Most unusual for a distinguished designer to leave by servant's door. I merely came here to deliver the Contessa's sweater. But Contessa already had the sweater. I brought it back again to do some minor alterations. Oh. Then perhaps we can see sweater you delivered, Mr. Dirk? If it'll give you any satisfaction and you'll get out of here, why not? Here it is. I will take that, please. <clears throat> Have you any similar sweaters in your luggage, Contessa? You have a search warrant, you said. Go on, search. But believe me, the authorities will hear about this. Perhaps like foolish but eager dog, we bark up the wrong tree. Contessa, I can only offer you a thousand apologies. It seems that we have made a mistake. A very big mistake, and you'll find out. Now you may go. And may I also offer a thousand apologies, Contessa? Where in heaven's name did you put it? Good old Von Trum. A fine fool I made of myself, listening to your theories. More than one way to skin a cat. But first one should be sure one has the right cat. I'm most satisfied about cat. I will now take possession, please. I'll give you credit for more sense, Mr. Chan. Put your hands up and turn around. Old Chinese saying, never argue while looking in mouth of tiger. Now, if you'll hand over the sweater. Most timely arrival on the road. You may now arrest La Contessa, also her accomplice, with sweater sewn with diamonds. And perhaps we now have the weapon which killed Mrs. Melton. Ah, yes. Walking stick, which she sometimes uses and sometimes forgets. As far as being murder weapon, perhaps yes, perhaps no. Hello, Mr. Martin. Well, Mr. Chan, come on in. Thank you. I hope you came in for that drink we promised each other. Seems years ago. Anyway, I want the chance to thank you for all your help and for catching Vernis Kelly. Tough baby, that Contessa. Laboratory tests show no blood stains on Contessa's walking stick. Therefore, she is now only being held for smuggling. Then who did kill my wife? Bloodstains were found on your gun. You killed your wife, Mr. Martin. But I loved my wife. It is now my very sad duty to take you to police headquarters. Do you mind if I have a few moments while I finish dressing? No. Please do. Thank you. I had to do it, Chen. She double-crossed me all along the line. I had no choice but to... You meant you had no other choice but to try a double murder. I will follow you, Mr. Martin. It is most tragic that men are never strong enough to fight the fate their own evil has created. Now go, please. 